In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the second derivative test and some cool points called inflection points. So we're going to be dealing with the second derivative here. And we have that if our second derivative is less than zero on some interval, then f is going to be concave down. And I'll explain what this means in a second. And if f double prime of x is greater than zero, we're going to have that f is concave up. So concave down and concave up refer to a specific direction of curves. So something that's concave down is going to look like one side of this. So it'll be a curve that kind of looks like a frowny face. This is actually how I remember it. I legitimately remember it like this. And concave up is going to look like a happy face with its curve. So it'll be in one of these directions. And if you remember concave up is happy, concave down is sad because you're either happy or you're sad, you're up or you're down. So we have this other definition here that says if f double prime of c is equal to zero, then c is called an inflection point. So you might remember that if f prime of c is equal to zero, that's called a critical point. Well, now we have one further for the second derivative, and that'll be an inflection point. So what can we do with this? Well, we can do the same thing as before. So first, we can take a function and we can find the critical and inflection points. So let's do that right away. So f prime of x is going to be equal to 4x cubed minus 12x squared. We can then factor out a common denominator of 4x squared, or a common factor of 4x squared, and then we'll have x minus 3 left. So our critical points, which we call CP, are going to be 0 and 3. Then our f double prime of x, we just take the derivative of f prime of x. So we're going to get 12x squared minus 24x. We can factor out a common factor of 12x. So we get x minus 2, and our inflection points, which we'll call ip, are going to be 0 and 2. So now what we can do is we can determine concavity, just like we would for increasing and decreasing. So we only need two numbers this time, 0 and 2. So what we can do is we can check out different values here. So let's check out x is equal to negative 1, x is equal to 1, and x is equal to 3. OK, when we have negative 1, we're going to get a negative times a negative. So we'll get a positive value less than 0. Between 0 and 2, we're going to end up with a negative value. And after 2, we'll get all positive values. So we know it is concave up between negative infinity and 0, as well as 2 to infinity. And it's going to be concave down between 0 and 2. So something that I'm thinking is happening in the curve, if we were to draw it, it would look something like this something like this. So as you can see at 2, we're going to shift from the frowny face to the happy face. And at 0, the same thing is going to happen. So you can kind of picture a curve looking something like this. And it might not be exactly the same, but this is the idea. We'll get into curve sketching complete graphs in the next video. So that's when we'll show you how to put this all together. All right, so we've now determined what we need to determine here. So let's move on to the next slide. And here's a new thing. This is actually the second derivative test. We suppose that f is continuous near c. If we say that the critical point is at 0, but the second derivative is greater than 0, then this means that there is a local minimum at that point. And if the second derivative is less than zero, it is going to have a maximum.
So, if you remember what this looks like, a concave up curve, which is what we're dealing with here, is sort of a happy face, and a concave down curve is going to be your sad face. So this kind of directly leads to telling you if you're going to have a maximum or a minimum. So this is what the second derivative test shows us. So I evaluated our previous function at points 0 and 3 in its first derivative and second derivative. And I just have some numbers here. We're going to say what this shows. So our critical point at 3 is going to be 0. And our inflectional point at 3 is going to be a 36. In fact, I shouldn't say inflectional point because we're not really looking at an inflectional point. That's not an inflectional point. But the second derivative at 3 is equal to 36. So we have our second derivative is greater than 0 and our first derivative is equal to 0. So we have that 3 is going to be a local minimum. And if we take a look at the first part, our critical point is 0, and our second derivative is 0. So, what does this mean? It means nothing. We cannot conclude that it is a local maximum or a local minimum, because we need strictly less than 0 or strictly greater than 0. If it happens to be exactly 0, then we can't get any result out of it. So keep that in mind when you're doing your practice problem here. We have a question where I just want you to find everything. So take a minute to do this and come back and I will go through this question with you. All right. So we'll start off by taking its derivative. So we're going to have 4x cubed minus 4x. We can then factor out a 4x. So we'll get x squared minus 1. So we're going to get, I suppose I will just, no, I'll leave it the way it is. We're going to get x is equal to, we'll just put them on a number line straight away. Negative 1, 0, and 1. And this is going to be our f prime number line. We'll find our second derivative here, which will be, 12x squared minus 4. We can factor out a 4, so we're going to get 3x squared minus 1. So this one's going to be a little bit uh, more challenging, but when we find our roots, we are going to see that we have negative the square root of 1 third and positive the square root of 1 third if we solve for x. So as an aside, we say 3x squared is equal to 1, x squared is equal to 1 third, therefore x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 third. So these are our inflectional points, and we have our critical points up here on the first line. So we found those. So now we need to find our intervals of increasing and decreasing. So if we take negative 2, we are going to get a, a negative value. If we get a negative 0 0.5, we are going to end up with a, a positive value. If we take 0.5, we will end up with a, a negative value. And if we take a number greater than 1, we'll end up with a positive value. So where there are pluses, it is going to increase, and where there's negatives, it is going to decrease. So, using this, we can figure out where we have a local max and minimum. Negative 1 is going to be a minimum. 0 is going to be a maximum. Of course, we can take a look at what these look like, sort of by drawing these pictures, and of course, 1 is going to be a minimum. Now, for f a double prime of x, if we take a number like, say, negative 5, we are going to get a negative number. If we take 0, that's going to be 4 times a negative 1, which we know is going to be negative. In fact, I need to reevaluate here. Negative 5, if we take a negative 5, we're going to get a positive interval. So this should be a positive to a negative. And if we take a positive number 5, then we're also going to get another hugely positive number here. 
So where it is positive, we're going to get concave up. And where it's negative, we're going to get a concave down. So we have now found everything we need to. So here's the question. What if I want to find the local maximums and minimums using the critical points? Well, all we need to do is take a look at our first number line here. And we just, whoa, just wanted to delete everything I wrote there. And if we line up our number lines perfectly, we can actually see where it corresponds to on the second line. So we see that at zero, the interval for our second derivative is going to be negative, which means this first one here, so zero would end up being a maximum. And using the first derivative test, we can see that yes, it is a maximum. So you don't have to use the second derivative test, but sometimes it might be a little bit easier, especially if you're just given the data. So there's multiple ways you can do that. Anyways, that is the second derivative test. Uh, next time we're going to be doing a nice summary of curve sketching and doing a couple graphs. So we'll be able to put all of this stuff together in a nice visual format. So I will see you guys then.